Hello everyone I'm on YouTube. This is your girl Bless Abundantly. I just come to you making a video about some things I heard. Uh, this is to particularly to Daryl Moore. And I'm not trying to make a bad video concerning what you had said about Andrea. I do want to say one thing that I did hear that I disagree with. And there's two things. Number one, you said you don't believe that she was raped. Now, I, I feel like uh, you w you wasn't there, sir. Um, I can't say particularly in your words, but you somewhat said that you don't feel like Andrea was raped at all. There was no records of her being raped or anything like that. Uh, I want to tell you that there are a lot of cases or there are a lot of women and men who have been raped and none of it has been reported to the police. A lot of kids get raped or molested and it goes unreported. So you're not going to, to find a case or any papers on that. I'm trying to make this really quick. Um, I don't know why you would say that. It seems like you're just reporting against somebody based on hearsay. Um, you have some records, but you're calling all these people to get some information about them. How do you know that these people are telling you the truth? If you do not have the person that you're calling about talk to you while you're on the phone with these people. Why why that person ain't on the phone? So that you know that you're getting the right information. You just getting this information from this person and you don't even know if that person is doing this out of spite, making up some lies or whatever else. But one thing people shouldn't say is that somebody was never raped or molested because you have no idea. A lot of these cases go without being reported. Nobody ever knows that. There have been tons and tons of people who have been molested and no police report was ever filed. So, of course, you're not going to find a police report. But that may answer some things about what's going on in her life now. Uh, another thing uh, is that you said that you don't believe that she, that her grandfather was a pastor. I was adopted and I did not know that a lot of my family that live in South Carolina went to church. I knew about some of the people in Buffalo who didn't grow up in a church because my grandmother moved out to Buffalo around the early 50s, right before my mom was born. And I wind up being adopted because my mom was unable to take care of me. But my grandmother owned her own business. She ran her own restaurant. And she had it very well established until, it, until that restaurant burnt down. And it burnt down a year before she died. Uh, my brother... Uh, who was also adopted, uh, his grandfather was actually a pastor. And his parents wasn't able to take care of him neither. His mother died right after he was given into foster care. And his father, he was somewhere else. But for you to say that you don't believe her grandfather was a pastor because of the lifestyle she lived in, that is wrong. That is very wrong. I, have to, I know you said something to that extent, and I'm thinking, wait a minute. Uh, my adopted brother grandfather was a pastor. Um, it seemed like you, even though this lady was wrong for what she did, it seemed like you're dragging her for filth even the more. This is the second day you have came on and just talked about then you're supposed to be coming on again Monday, Tuesday, talking about her and a couple of other people and everything else. Um, 
I mean, what is y'all going to get out of this by spelling this? What What is y'all going to get out of it? Uh, who is y'all actually working for anyway? And I want to say uh, that Victor Cousin, y'all trying to make him come out and smell like roses. Victor Cousin, even though Andrea was wrong for what she had done, and she was uh, being used by some other pastor to set set up Victor Cousin. The thing is, is that none of this would have happened if people would realize when you take the office of a pastor, you are not supposed to be sitting there sleeping around with different women just because you are single. You ain't supposed to be trying to fornicate, period, if it's just one woman. I got to say, if you slip up with the woman and you're going to marry her, and y'all had that, you know, that night where y'all just got together before marriage or whatever else. But when you sit up there and you just on your wild oaks because you single and you can have this woman, that woman. I know people are saying, well, that's how men are. No, that's how dogs are. A respectful man don't run from bed to bed. Uh, especially a man of the cloth. He, when he took pastor, he should have known then that that is something that you don't do. And plus in First Timothy, I think it's First Timothy, but in the in one of those first or second Timothy, and in Thessalonica, it tells you about or Titus rather. Either First Timothy or Second Timothy, and in Titus it tells you about the office of a pastor. I should grab my Bible. I don't have it on me at this moment. But it tells you the requirements of being a pastor, being the husband of one wife. You ain't supposed to be having many girlfriends just because you're a single man, not in the church. And maybe that's something you don't know, Daryl. So, anyway... um, I mean, I just don't understand. Uh, y'all, y'all are very brutal. And y'all don't even know if what these people are telling you are 100% right. I can understand paper trail. You can't dispute paper trail. But hearsay, that's a different story. And people's reputations and lives have been ruined off of what somebody has said about somebody else that may or may not be true. Now, I'm not taking up for Andrea. I don't know her. I understand that she had did some things wrong to try to keep a beef going between you guys, you and other bloggers. That some think that there were things that she said and lied about. And I understand you bring that to the forefront. But you was up there and spill out about her having a, a foot fetish and being um, uh, into S M M or what is it, B S? Spanking people, I guess. I, and all of that, and that she was being hired by this one dude who is in ministry to take down another dude, and she happened to fall in love with this dude and stuff like that. Then has sought revenge for this dude and stuff when none of that would have never happened had people known what they office as a pastor is. And that's the same thing. When I heard some things about Juanita Bynum about what she did years ago, I heard about it like 20 years after she did it. It's like, I can't sit there be trying to find out stuff about her. I was starting to. I was starting to because I had um, contacted some people and that's how um, I happened to see a video on YouTube that somebody had shared and then I contact them and they told me the story what happened what they had already told other people that had happened between wanting to buy them and themselves and then I went to try to find out more stuff but I was unable to. I think I contacted one or two more people and I know I contacted one person who interviewed Wanted Bytham 
in Atlanta, Georgia, that I knew very well. And they didn't give me no information at all. And then I contacted somebody who was once under one of the ministry. And I didn't hear nothing from them neither. And I decided to just leave it alone. Because whatever happened in the past, is the past. And, you know, I'm not God. I, I ain't nobody to be putting her in no heaven or hell. And I left it alone and realized, you know what, I can't drag her for filth over something that happened 20 years ago. I just pray that she's not doing it now. And even though I heard about that situation that she had with somebody else that happened three or four years ago, that was in the past. I found that out way after it happened. So, I mean, you thinking of this stuff, I mean, are you her judge? Do you have a heaven or hell to put Andrea in? I mean, is this going to make things better? Is it going to make her life better? Are you doing anything to improve anybody's life that you are talking about as far as dragging out? I'm not talking about the people who you're trying to help free out of jail or anything like that. I'm talking about the ones who you have been running down and finding all this tea about and sitting up there telling these people about. I mean... Is this going to make their life better once you don't put, put out all the court documents and put out all the business that they did and all the sex capades that they had? Is, is it going to make it better? That's all I have to ask. But anyway, I just wanted to point, it out, point out those two things. That first of all, just because somebody did not report a rape, that, don't, that do not mean it never happened. A lot of people don't report rapes and molestations. And second of all, um, people could have a grandfather, grandparent, or either a parent that are in ministry, that have pastored a church. I had a my adopted dad pastor a church. My biological father was married to a woman who was a pastor in Virginia. And he was trying to work in ministry and stuff like that, but he found out it wasn't for him. They wind up getting a divorce, but they remain good friends. And then um, my adopted brother, his grandfather, his biological grandfather was pastoring a church. He is in ministry and everything like that because we grew up in the church as well. But... There was a young lady who, the young lady that told me about wanting to buy them, that emailed me back. She grew up in the church. And, but she strayed away and everything. And she met wanting to buy them in some club. And she told that story on somebody else's platform way before I emailed her. I just happened to see it and emailed her. And she told me that it was true and stuff like that. And how long the relationship lasts. But that's all I have to say. I mean, when y'all thinking up this stuff on people, make sure that this stuff is 100% true because you could damage somebody's life. And I understand that y'all felt like Victor Cuz in ministry had went down, but a lot of pastors who messed around, first of all, they are blind. They get blinded. And they can't see, they don't have no prophecy for nobody because God is trying to talk to them about them, about them. And now I understand that God could use people that's not saved. He could use them for a minute, but I mean, how you got to work for everybody else and the Lord ain't tell you that you need to stop sleeping around with these women and that you don't need to be getting drunk and be using the words, the language that you use, because I did see a video just now with this man being drunk and everything else and he's out there throwing F-bombs around and stuff like that. I just seen the video and I wasn't even looking for that video. I was looking up for something else and that video happened to be right there that was shared by Larry Reed. It was shared about a year or so ago. And that man was as drunk as a skunk. As a skunk. But that goes for every pastor. These pastors, when they take the office of a pastor, when these men take the office of a pastor, 
And I'm saying men for a reason. I will. Because a lot of these men, especially men, they sit up there and they get messed up by these women and this power that they have. And all of a sudden, their ministry is down the drain because of some stupid stuff that they did. And and that'll take you down. A woman and power. So, with that being said, I'm going to sign off here. And for anybody who listened to this video, I will not be doing no more coins or how to find valuable coins uh, because I'm getting too many new coins from the bank and and so right now it's just a waste of time and then we got this pandemic going on uh, with this virus and money can be very dirty this virus lasts for um, three days on metal and plastic um, it could be in the air for as long as three hours uh, so you know we are constantly washing our hands and everything else so what I am going to do is share videos on the automobiles um, and I'm going to start with what I started talking about first on Facebook and that's the tires and everything I'm going to go right into the brake system and so anyway um, yeah just keep me lifted up in prayer but I just uh, basically tagged there on this video to let them know how I felt about it and to let them to make them realize that there are some things that could happen to people that go unreported. Because people don't have no police report about this happening or that happening, that don't mean that it didn't happen. So with that being said, y'all have a, a great night. Keep me and your prayers blessed abundantly. Goodbye. And I'll keep y'all guys in my prayers too. Love you all.